And romance really plays a part in our first uh, little feature as well. Mr. Kobe Whitmore is an illustrator who now lives in Hilton Head. And I think he did a lot to uh, sort of put down how Americans picture romance. Let's go with Beryl now to Hilton Head, Mr. Kobe Whitmore. When, when I started in illustration, uh, it, was no, it was during the boy-girl period, literally is what they call it. Some people call it the golden era, but it was uh, clinches and happy family situations, very few tragedies, you know. I did some novels, but uh, those were quite often depicted the good life. His work has graced the covers of some of the most prominent magazines in the country. He has a penchant for racing cars, and he's noted for creating some of the world's most beautiful illustrations of women. He is illustrator Kobe Whitmore, whose work epitomizes that which is good in the field of illustration. So much so that in 1978, Kobe was elected to the Society of Illustrators Hall of Fame. Yet sitting in his Hilton Head studio, Kobe Whitmore modestly disclaims any special rights and honors, owning it all simply to luck. I was lucky to get tied to some very descriptive writer. Daphne du Maurier was the best. Steinbeck was good. J.P. Marquin, I did a lot of his serial. When I say tied to them, what they used to do is buy pre-publication rights. And they'd run three installments. And concurrent with the third installment, when I say they, I'm talking about the Slicks, uh, McCall, or Ray's Home Journal. Uh, concurrent with the third installment, the, the hardback book would be announced, if it was Harper's or, you know, somebody like that. And, uh, as a matter of fact, when that stopped, they, they paid, they actually paid quite a bit of money to, to do that, and almost all those were turned into movies. But, uh, I was fortunate in being tied to several of those authors uh, got to a point where we didn't get manuscripts. We'd, they'd just say, do a, do a clinch, or do something that we can write in to the story, you know. Whitmore's interest in illustrating began while he was working as a flyboy for Red Book magazine. McClellan Barclay, who was a great cover artist for Red Book, uh, came into the press room and into our press, it was a, where we were printing Red Book, to look at his cover, which we were using a new process. We were varnishing it, so it was very bright. And uh, he was in a dinner jacket, and had just obviously come from a very pleasant evening, and I thought, hell, that's... I like that a lot better than what I'm doing. <laughs> I think uh, a combination of seeing Mac Barkley and the, and the, with the general manager of McCall's, you know, uh, going through there, and falling in love with Ginny Comer, who is my wife, obviously now. Uh, she was the catalyst. She, I wanted to marry her, and <laughs> I wasn't going to be able to do it working on a press. You called, I said, After earning several art scholarships, Whitmore apprenticed for Haddon Sunbloom in Chicago. Then he worked his way up the ranks at the famed Chicago Herald Examiner before making a name for himself in magazine illustration and then developing that famous Whitmore style. And I frequently use what you call dropouts. Uh, if a guy had a blue or gray suit, I'd paint the whole background blue-gray and just simply paint his cuffs, hands, you know, and head in, or same thing with a, a woman. Uh, 
As a matter of fact, one of the most interesting ones, I don't know if you saw, is the, the girl, the man pulling the sheet. That was, uh, I was called by the editor, of, new editor of McCall, who said, I'm going to start off with a bang and I want a double spread of a nude. And this was a very conservative lady magazine. That. He said, I know, that's your problem. Uh, your so, problem? Yeah. <laughs> and I think, frankly, that's what a lot of our illustration was, was solving some kind of a problem. It's got kind of silly sometimes, you know, or you do just shocking things at that time to make them weird colors. But it was a business. I, I don't know how much art was involved. Sometimes even the illustrator was shocked, as evidenced by this lady's home journal cover featuring Whitmore's brother and an up and coming young actress named Grace Kelly. My brother is sitting on a bench here, and Grace Kelly was. Uh, she was about 17 or 18 and still had a little baby fat and she was sitting over here and Tim, my brother, was talking to her in the, in the story. It was a dog show, a bench show. And he had his hand out like this and I had one, two, three, four, five fingers and a thumb. I like to draw pretty girls. And, uh, I like to draw men, too. I'm no good at 50-year-old ladies who <laughs> would rather look 21. I, I just, I get lost there. If you look at a lot of the illustrations, uh, I made a, the women, it was a, a, a connotation of beauty, the, what they had around them. Or, and uh, I used to use a thing where it would be a hand, you know, in front of maybe just one eye. It wasn't really a painting of a beautiful woman, it was a, 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 an impression. Uh, one, one beautiful eye or, or mouth. I very seldom did just straight on pretty girl pictures. And a lot of them were terribly trite, you know, or biting a finger, <laughs> something of that nature. But uh, I would say that I implied beauty rather than painted it. I didn't really become interested in art, per se, that is. It, until, uh, I'd say a good 10 years after I was in the business. Uh, and uh, I picked up on the French Impressions. And I think probably the only thing I did in illustration that changed it slightly was used kind of Renoir color, a lot of blues and grays and greens in the skin and the tones and, uh, instead of so-called flesh color. Those hues, coupled with an uncanny presentation of the less is more theory and the ability to capture a moment, are now trademark Whitmore. I d don't do portraits in the manner of portraits. I'll do a, just a, a thousandth of a second out of a person's life, what they call a people painter. Uh, uh, biggest uh, problem I have right now is how I want to depict them, you know, and what way. Being a commercial artist and illustrator for so long, to put that commercial animal 
behind you, it's pretty hard to just go out and paint. Say, well, I'm going to paint what I want to paint. I was, in, I, I, I had a hell of a time doing that. I, I wonder if somebody like this, you know, this is the first thing that comes to mind. I think I've been lucky in that what I like, other people like. I feel I've, that's the most fortunate thing that's happened to me. I love those illustrations, and you can't help but think that uh, some of Kobe Whitmore's work sort of helped define our idea of romance in that era, and uh, all those men and women and those sort of vaguely suggestive poses in women's magazines that had to have a big effect on romance and uh, just our whole conception of what uh, love was all about. Well, we're going to keep talking.